The solar system is unique because of its special structure and most importantly, optimal conditions for life to develop. Therefore, missions that are aimed at finding planets we could potentially inhabit and trying to find them in similar star systems. But what if we tell you there is a planetary system not far from us that is very similar to ours? And more to that, it consists largely of planets that are similar to Earth. Today we'll tell you about the TRAPPIST-1 system and whether or not its planets would be able to support life. The TRAPPIST-1 system was discovered very recently. In 2016, a team of scientists led by Mikel Guillon and Susan Letterer discovered three planets orbiting an ultra-cool dwarf star known as TRAPPIST-1A, 40 light years, 235 trillion miles, 378 trillion kilometers from Earth. However, the very next year, NASA astronomers made a new discovery using the Spitzer Space Telescope. Turned out there are as many as seven planets in this planetary system. However, TRAPPIST-1 has no gas giants like Saturn or Jupiter. Almost all of its planets are structurally similar to Earth. These findings led scientists to speculate that perhaps TRAPPIST-1 may have the potential for life to exist there. So what does the TRAPPIST-1 system look like? The central star, as we've already mentioned, is a red dwarf. It has seven planets revolving around it, roughly the size of Earth. All of them have the name TRAPPIST-1, but each planet has an individually assigned alphabetical index from TRAPPIST-1b to H. Unlike our solar system, TRAPPIST-1 has several other important distinguishing features. First, all the planets in this system only face the parent star with one side, the same way as we see the moon. The time it takes the planets to rotate around their axis is the same amount of time it takes them to orbit the star, which means that one day on these planets is equal to one year in length. This process is called tidal locking. It's caused by the gravitational interaction between space objects. Secondly, all the planets are very close to each other. It is likely that the desensification of the system is caused by an internal migration of the planets, which also led to their resonance. For example, the distance between the star and its nearest planet, TRAPPIST-1b, is only 11 million miles. For reference, the average distance between the Sun and Mercury is 36 million miles. This means that these planets might be heated better due to relative proximity to their star as well as interplanetary gravity, which would allow them to retain water inside themselves. Does this figure that all these planets can hypothetically be habitable? Let's try to figure this out. First, let's take a closer look at the central star. TRAPPIST-1a is very cold and small when compared to our sun, for example. Its surface temperature is only about 4,154 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas the temperature of the Sun is close to 9,930 degrees Fahrenheit. Its size can be compared with Jupiter and its mass approximately 13 times smaller than the Sun's mass. However, red dwarfs burn their hydrogen supply much more slowly, which means they can exist for a very long time, several trillion years, in contrast to the age of stars like the Sun, which is closer to 10 billion. According to research by Adam Bergeser of the University of California, TRAPPIST-1a may be about 7.5 billion years old, which would be considered a relatively young age for such stars. However, if red dwarfs are so cold, how could they heat the entire planetary systems? True. For a long time, there was an assumption that red dwarfs were not capable of supporting life, but the discovery of TRAPPIST-1 has changed scientists' view. The peculiarity of the proximity between the planets and the temperature of the star maintain, on average, moderate temperatures in the range from negative 171 degrees Fahrenheit to 258 degrees Fahrenheit on these planets. Now, what's more, thanks to relatively low temperatures as far as stars go, Dwarfs can help conserve water on the planet in their planetary system, 
even the ones closest to it, and also interestingly, funnel amino acids and important chemicals through their flares. On the other hand, dwarfs can expose nearby planets to strong UV radiation, creating conditions unsuitable for life. Therefore, let's move on to the planets themselves now and find out how the characteristics of their system affect them and the potential life on them. The first on the list is TRAPPIST-1b. Its radius is 10 times larger than the radius of Earth. Similar to Earth, it's also made of rock, iron, and likely ice. Interestingly, 1b may even contain a small layer of water, about 0.2% of its total mass. Although some scientists are inclined to believe that the planet is completely dry and has only oceans of magma. However, the conditions on this planet are far from earthly. Obviously, the proximity to the parent star must result in a very heated surface. Moreover, the gravitational influence from the star may cause strong volcanic activity, heating the surface even more and melting the internal rocks. However, the temperature on 1b is too high even for this. Temperature there reaches 2,156 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 2.5 times higher than on Venus at 860 degrees Fahrenheit. The reason for such temperatures may be the high density and possibly atmosphere in which gas accumulates after volcanic eruptions, which prevents heat from leaving the planet. The next planet, TRAPPIST-1c, is similar in composition to TRAPPIST-1b, but most likely has neither ice nor water. It is the heaviest planet in the entire system, even though it has a smaller radius than 1b. It's also very likely that it has high levels of geological activity, and that's due to the influence of the star and orbital resonance. The exact surface temperature of 1c, it's unknown. The star can heat it up to about 158 degrees Fahrenheit, but the internal activity of the planet is capable of raising the temperature several hundred degrees. However, it will most likely not reach the same temperatures as 1b due to the atmosphere, which is likely less dense. One of the features of 1c is its massive core made of metal, which is almost one and a half times larger than Earth's. Because of this, its large magnetic field is able to protect the planet from stellar wind, a stream of charged particles that could destroy the atmosphere. However, 1c is unlikely to contain water, and like 1b, the surface heats up significantly due to gases, which makes life on these planets impossible. Next, we have TRAPPIST-1d, one of the smallest planets in the system, with a mass about three times smaller than Earth. It's composed of rock and metal, but very likely, like 1b, it must have an ocean, a layer of ice, or a dense atmosphere. And that's according to the theoretical research of its mass and radius. Astronomer Vera Dobos believes that the surface on 1d could be as reflective as the surface of Earth. This means that 1d may have liquid water and a dense atmosphere, which in turn may even contain ozone, which would protect the planet against harmful radiation. Moreover, the scientist also suggests that unlike 1b and 1c, 1d can avoid a mass-scale greenhouse effect, which would greatly increase surface temperatures due to this small mass. However, despite strong evidence, some scientists have other assumptions about the possibility of life on TRAPPIST-1d. Researchers from the University of Washington believe that 1d receives more energy from the star than the more distant planets, and therefore, it may be similar to our Venus with a pronounced greenhouse effect, like on 1b or 1c. Therefore, life is unlikely to develop there. On the other hand, it may also have some hydrogen in the atmosphere, which would prevent it from overheating. Furthermore, its atmosphere may contain a very little CO2, which would have a negative effect on the emergence of life. In addition, its orbit is almost circular, as in 1d may be heated slightly due to gravity. Finally, due to its small size, the planet may not have a magnetic field. Therefore, the stellar wind could carry away volatile particles from the atmosphere, including water, as it may have happened with Mars. The conditions on 1d are quite controversial, so it requires further research from scientists. 
But the fourth planet in the TRAPPIST-1 system presents the greatest interest to the scientific world. TRAPPIST-1e is more similar to Earth than other planets in the terms of radius, density, and heat received from the central star. Its orbit is 2.7 million miles away from the star, which results in the planet completing a full revolution in six days. Its composition as a whole is very similar to that of 1c. 1e is mainly composed of rock and metal. Does that mean there's no water there, like on 1c? NASA researchers believe that 1e is in a so-called habitable zone, a distance within a planetary system where it's neither too warm nor too cold, which also keeps water in its liquid form. Therefore, it's very likely that 1E may contain water, and in quite large quantities, in fact. Researcher Vera Dobo suggests that an excessive greenhouse effect may not be characteristic for this planet, unlike all the previous planets we've discussed so far. This means that 1E would be able to maintain a moderate temperature, maintaining entire oceans on its surface. Moreover, due to its weight, 1E may have an atmosphere that's not too dense. A group of scientists led by astrophysicist Martin Turbett believes that the atmosphere on 1E may be rich in CO2 and contain almost no hydrogen, preventing the planet from overheating. Additionally, 1E can retain its atmosphere for an extended time despite the impact of the stellar wind and may therefore create optimal conditions for life. However, the exact mass of 1E has not yet been established. Therefore, just as with 1D, it's difficult to say for sure whether or not there may be water on it. Although scientists largely agree on the presence of an ocean and the planet's potential habitability, some suggest that it may be a homogeneous rocky planet. The following planets, Trappist 1F and 1G, are also presumed to be generally similar in their mass rocky structure, radius, and density to planet 1E. However, that's where the similarities end. Both planets are at a great distance from the star, one 3.6 million miles away, and the other is 4.3 million miles from the parent star, respectively, also within the habitable zone. However, their surface is not as heated by the red dwarf, and scientists suggest that both of them may be covered with a solid layer of ice. Nonetheless, they may have the same heating potential as 1D from gravitational interaction with the star. That is, despite the very little heat from the star itself, planets can be heated properly from the inside, and therefore they are likely to have a global ocean under the ice. Furthermore, likely due to their high internal temperature, the water on these planets could evaporate, forming a dense atmosphere rich in oxygen. And so it is possible that their surface may not be that cold, but could even be warmer than Earth's. However, according to research by a group of scientists led by Bill Quarles, up to 20% of 1F is made of water. Given its possible internal heating, as well as the mass of the planet, likely smaller than that of Earth, scientists believe that water can only exist there in the form of clouds. Equally, 1G also evolved with a lot of water. According to some scientific reports, the depth of its ocean can be 416 miles. Although such ample amounts of water may seem beneficial to life, oceanic evaporation can significantly increase the oxygen pressure in the atmosphere casting doubt on the possibility of any development of a living organism. Therefore, despite the likely presence of water, the question of the habitability of these planets requires new research focused on their atmosphere. And finally, the seventh planet, TRAPPIST-1h, is the most removed from the star as well as the smallest in the entire system. Unlike all the other planets, 1H may be composed almost entirely of water and is likely to have very little rock in its composition. However, it's likely also that 1H is heated much less than the others. The parent star alone would bring the surface temperature to only about negative 153 degrees Fahrenheit. Furthermore, some scientists suggest that the amount of heat generated by gravity would also be quite low for 1H. However, researcher Kathleen Mant believes that 1H may have a lot of volcanic activity, spewing water instead of lava. 
That would mean the planet's able to replenish its atmosphere due to the emitted gases. Additionally, the remoteness of 1H allows it to firmly retain its atmosphere, probably consisting of nitrogen and methane like on Titan, since the stellar wind hardly touches it. And yet even this quality does not speak in favor of life on the planet. It's still very cold and therefore probably cannot sustain water in liquid form. But the question remains, could life hypothetically exist in this Trappist-1 system? The tidal lock is not great for sustaining life because one side of the planet's always scorchingly hot and the other side is freezing cold. However, almost all planets in the system can cope with this drastic difference in temperature due to their water content and their atmosphere. The heated ocean and atmosphere can transfer heat to the colder zones maintaining the temperature balance. Nonetheless, only the middle planets, 1D and 1E, meet the criteria to be on the list of potentially habitable planets. 1b and 1c are too hot and may have lost water due to their gravitational relationship with the star, whereas 1f and 1g and 1h are probably not warm enough due to the weak greenhouse effect, or they're also quite hot. But however, 1d and 1e still require extensive research since conditions on these planets may turn out to be more similar to Venus although 1E is very unlikely to fall into that category. In fact, if both planets were covered in ice, they might still be habitable. The TRAPPIST-1 system remains very interesting to all of us. In 2021, NASA sent the James Webb Telescope to the L2 Lagrange point with a view to study TRAPPIST-1, among other things. Therefore, we can expect new data on a distant system very soon, which would reveal more secrets about the origin of our universe and possibly even the origin of life.